We celebrate the Mass this morning of the second Sunday of Christmas Tide. Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Susan Coglin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, do you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, splendour of faithful souls, graciously be pleased to fill the world with your glory, and show yourself to all peoples by the radiance of your light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. Wisdom speaks her own praises. In the midst of her people, she glories in herself. She opens her mouth in the assembly of the Most High. She glories herself in the presence of the Mighty One. Then the Creator of all things instructed me, and He who created me fixed a place for my tent. He said, pitch your tent in Jacob, Make Israel your inheritance. From eternity, in the beginning, he created me, and for eternity I shall remain. I ministered before him in the holy tabernacle, and thus was I established in Zion. In the beloved city he has given me rest, and in Jerusalem I wield my authority. I have taken root in a privileged people, in the Lord's property, in his inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us all with spiritual blessings of heaven in Christ. Before the world was made, he chose us, chose us in Christ, to be holy and spotless, and to live through love in his presence, determining that we should become his adopted sons through Jesus Christ, for his own kind purposes, to make us praise the glory of his grace, his free gift to us in the beloved. That will explain why I, having once heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love that you show towards all the saints, have never failed to remember you in my prayers and to thank God for you. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and perception of what is revealed, to bring you to full knowledge of him. May he enlighten the eyes of your mind so that you can see what hope his call holds for you what rich glories he has promised the saints will inherit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in him, and that life was the light of men, a light that shines in the dark, a light that darkness could not overpower. The word was the true light that enlightens all men, and he was coming into the world. He was in the world that had its being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him who was born, not out of human stock or urge of the flesh or will of man, but of God himself. The word was made flesh. He lived among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is his, as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. English language, as I'm sure you know, is permeated with all kinds of phrases and we have a great number of customs indeed which have been inspired down the centuries by our Catholic faith. At least that was until the Reformation and then of course Puritanism which put an end to any joyful expressions of religion. There are some linguists who believe that Merry Christmas is a derivation of a greeting, Merry Christmas. I suppose at least phonically you can make some connection there. I knew a Franciscan priest many years ago when I was a, a young priest. He used to go around parishes giving talks on the origin of pub names and pub signs. I suppose we ought to give some thought to publicans at this time, we were also having a rather hard time. But such names as 
the cross keys, the mitre, the angel, the bell, the lamb, the salutation, and many others, we refer to days when the Catholic faith was an integral part of life in our land, just reminding us how actually incarnational our faith is. And I'm sure over these last few days we've all been wishing each other a happy new year, maybe even raising a glass or two on Zoom whilst doing so, because we want our relatives and our friends to have a good year ahead. A happy new year means different things to different people. We hope it will mean a year free of sickness and disease, a year full of financial prosperity, no employment problems, a year free from anxiety and from suffering, all perfectly and good, legitimate sentiments. In short, we hope and pray that nothing bad or evil will happen to us. The only way to ensure this, however, is to rekindle our sense of what we call divine filiation. The truth, the awareness of the truth, that we are sons and daughters of our Father God. This in turn, this truth, is at the very heart of the scriptures, especially as proclaimed in the prologue of St. John's Gospel today. And this sentiment is so central to our Christian belief that at least up until the 1960s, this Gospel was read at the end of every Mass. The last words that Catholics would have heard as they left Holy Mass daily would not have been the priest saying, there's going to be a second collection today for the sick and tired clergy, but the Word of God reminding us of the incarnation of the Son of God and that we have been made his children so that we know we have a Father who has an ineffable love for each one of us. And there's more besides. If we are children of God, then we can have a familiar relationship with God which is expressed by him, letting us know the divine person of Jesus Christ, his Son, and being able to address him personally, by name. That is how familiar God wants our relationship to be with him. Now, in any relationship, we know there comes a point when you feel comfortable enough to address someone by their Christian name. Not their forename, by the way, as we've been made to say nowadays, but by their Christian name. Because calling someone by their name implies an intimacy with that person. Remember someone once saying to me that a definition of a friend is someone who, when you say their name, or when you hear their name, your name said, makes you feel safe and secure, hearing your name upon their lips. The name of Jesus was given to the world at the moment of the angelic salutation to Mary. You are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. The saints tell us that the holy name of our Lord is a prayer in itself, a name that we can call upon in times of suffering, temptation and distress. I often think of our English martyrs who at the moment of their death would simply call out the holy name of our Lord for strength to endure their sufferings. Last weekend we celebrated the Feast of the Holy Family and I'm sure all of you, like myself, have prayed countless times that lovely prayer, invoking the holy name of our Lord. I've prayed it many times with the sick and the dying. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, may I breathe forth my soul in peace with you. A prayer of comfort and solace, which many of us say at the end of the day as we place our lives, our souls, our sleep into the hands of Jesus through Mary and Joseph, who are often described as the Trinity 
on earth. And Jesus chose to have Joseph as his foster father and as his protector on earth. And as you know, Pope Francis has asked us to observe this year until the 8th of December as a special year dedicated to this great patriarch, Joseph. We need his help. We need his inspiration and his model of human fatherhood more than ever in our present times. So, in addition to having wished everyone a Merry Christmas, we might also add, and a Joseph New Year. Praise be Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the world to come.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, the offerings we make on the nativity of your only begotten Son. For by it you show us the way of truth and promise the life of the heavenly kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy. Heaven, are full of your glory. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts who are brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious Marthas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Our Father, who art in hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, enter unto me. But only say the word, and my soul shall be Body of Christ.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we humbly ask you that through this working of this mystery, our offences may be cleansed and our just desires fulfilled through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remind you, Wednesday, the 6th of January, is the epiphany of our Lord. It's not a holy day at the moment because, as you know, the obligation has been suspended during the pandemic but it's a great feast often referred to as little christmas it's an important feast and a day in which we should try to go to holy mass please continue to use the online booking facility for signing up for masses and on wednesday the masses are at 9 12 noon and 8 p.m and for those i've not seen or greeted already i do wish you a very happy 2021 the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks.